Longtime Chicago alderman Roman Puchinski once said, there's nothing as crucial to an alderman as garbage. So how did garbage cans become a source and symbol of political power in this city? Jeffrey Bayer is here with some trashy history in tonight's Ask Jeffrey. Hey again, Jeffrey. Uh, hi, Brand is trash talk tonight. That's me and you. So <laughs> this question comes from Jean Smiling Coyote in West Ridge. The question is, when I was walking home today, I saw this concrete box in an alley in West Edgewater. Was this product the predecessor to our modern freestanding home garbage cans? OK, well, let's take a look at the object our viewer is trash talking about. Um, and she's right. Um, this is basically an old trash receptacle. Um, which people also used as their own private incinerators uh, made of concrete and metal. They were manufactured from the 1920s through the 1940s. On the lid, you can see the name of the manufacturer, Sanitary Garbage Box Company. Uh, this was one of a handful of local garbage box makers. Uh, residents would throw their trash in the top opening and, and they could burn it in there. And then sanitation workers would shovel out the ashes or the unburned trash um, through a second opening near the bottom on the alley side. Um, here's a look at a, a different box that we found in a northwest side alley. This one has been painted so it looks silver. That's fascinating. So if a few of them have survived all these years, they must have been pretty sturdy. Why don't we use them anymore? Uh, well, beginning in the 1950s, uh, the city phased them out because they were small and difficult to empty without leaving a trail of debris, making them a favorite dining spot for rats. Um, but it took a demolition crew with sledgehammers to dismantle the boxes, um, so some of them were just never torn down. Now, instead of the boxes, the city uh, required residents to supply their own covered metal garbage cans, and many citizens balked at, at the expense. Trash collection was handled separately in each ward. And as you said in your introduction, the aldermen and other ward bosses often saw the service as a way to win favor and win votes from constituents. So in some wards, they began providing 55 gallon steel drums free of charge, but of course, with the name of the responsible Paul stenciled on the side, um, the turquoise barrel in this picture uh, that you can see is emblazoned with the words Kelly cans, for 47th Ward Committeeman Ed Kelly. Um, my former next door neighbor uh, in Chicago, Greg Basil, was the superintendent of streets and sand in the 44th Ward, and he fondly remembers Bernie Cans, stenciled with the line, compliments of Alderman Bernie Hansen. Um, other barrels carried the name of the 43rd Ward Superintendent Pete Chivarelli, who, by the way, also owned Demon Dogs and managed the rock band Chicago, a trifecta of Chicago cred. <laughs> Isn't it though? And that's what everybody wants is their, their name on a trash can. Yeah. Um, when did the plastic carts that we use now become the standard? Those began appearing during Harold Washington's administration in 1985. They saved money uh, because just one sanitation worker is all you need to attach the cart to a motorized arm that dumps trash into the truck. Now, 47th Ward Alderman Gene Schulter was an early adopter of, uh, of these because the carts replaced the Kelly cans of his rival, Ed Kelly. Okay, so the trash has been picked up. Then what has Chicago done with it? Um, well, the options have traditionally been you either burn it or, or you dump it. Now, I remember as a child, uh, my grandmother's south side high rise apartment building had uh, a trash chute right down the hall and it, it emptied uh, into the building's own incinerator. Um, schools, hospitals and other large buildings typically also had their own incinerators and there were these cleaner burning big city owned incinerators too. Uh, but by the 1980s, uh, the trash had more plastics and consumer electronics and toxic chemicals, which created air pollution worries, um, and that ended incineration. The last municipal incinerator closed in 1996. And of course, that leaves us with the dumping option. Yes, and many places in the city, Brandis, are literally built on trash. Uh, decades of dumping thousands of tons of trash daily into landfills literally changed the topography of Chicago, creating mountains up to 17 stories high in some places and filling up quarries and clay pits that had been used for brick making. Uh, of course, no one wanted landfills in their neighborhoods for obvious reasons. Um, we found this 
a picture of an area around 47th Street in Damon Avenue when it was a dump in 1906, to give you an idea. And eventually all the dumps were filled up anyway. Um, today, there are no active landfills within city limits and Chicago's non-recyclable trash ends up about 100 miles away in one of four landfills, two of them in Illinois and two in Indiana. Um, but that waste doesn't go entirely to waste. Um, the gas created as the trash decomposes is captured and sent to gas to energy plants, which then sells it to utility companies. And also a good reminder to reduce, reuse, and recycle, Jeffrey. Absolutely, yes. All right. Always good talking trash with you. Thanks, Jeffrey. Thanks, Brandis. And you can find more on this and other Ask Jeffrey questions on our website. And while you're there, be sure to toss in your own questions about Chicago to Jeffrey Bear.